Show yourself. <laughs> Why did you hide? Oh, you got nice red glasses. Come on. Oh, don't, don't cover yourself. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That is nice. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hi. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 24 today. Oh, January 24 already. That's right. Um, we have had some little excitement in the house. This morning, we we brought home a uh, a new puppy, a new German Shepherd, and uh, yep. This morning we had a little excitement because the puppy was whining, and we woke up a little early, so uh, we're all up and awake. Maybe sleepy, but up and awake, right? Are we? Okay. Well, today we have a very very long gospel. It's a long gospel, so I'm not. In the interest of time, I'm not going to read it, but um, uh, we will explain what the gospel is all about. Okay, the gospel is from St. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 20, and it is about the sower. The sower who went out to sow the seed, right? Uh, so Jesus was telling the parable of the sower who went out to sow the seed, to scatter seed in the ground in order to, well, um, you know, like here... Here in the Central Valley, we are in a farming uh, and agricultural uh, community, so we know that the, we know about farming around here a little bit. We know that uh, we know that uh, um, you know people grow uh, crops of all sorts. So this story is like that. So the sower went out to sow. Okay, he was scattering seeds in the ground, and uh, as Jesus said, some of those seeds fell on thorny grounds. Some fell on, uh, on, on hard ground. Uh, some fell on good ground. Okay? So he describes three types of soil upon which uh, the seed that was sown fell. And, and because uh, the same seed fell on different kinds of soil, the soil now, um, well, absorbed, it, absorbed the seed also in different ways some of which got wasted because they were not able to penetrate the ground. They weren't able to seep down to the ground. Okay? So birds came and, uh, and ate them up. Or in some areas, uh, they were choked up and uh, they just died. But some of them, some of them fell on good soil, on soil that was properly cultivated, see? properly uh, uh, watered, properly aerated, and so the soil that fell there grew into uh, whatever crop it was that the seed was. So that's the story. Now, the apostles were wondering, well, what's the relationship of this? What is this kind of parable? What does it mean? Okay? So Jesus went ahead to describe what the parable was all about. And he said that, um, well, um, the, the word, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God that uh, the sower, the sower uh, disseminates, broadcasts, okay, to people. The pe the soil will be people, okay. So who is the sower in this case? Let's try to examine this. Who is the sower? Who's the one scattering the good seed, the good message? Okay, the seed is the message, the word of God, right? Okay, that's primarily that's God, that's Jesus Christ, okay. And he does that. Uh, he has, he did that um, during his ministry on earth. Okay, and afterwards it was carried out uh, the same ministry by the apostles and now the church. And each one of us, all of us, baptized Catholics, are also sowers of that seed. By virtue of our baptism, we also are now sowers of that seed. We have inherited from Jesus the ministry of sowing good seed okay? and what does it mean by sowing good seed well in our own little ways okay depending on our vocations in life we can carry the word of god to other people we can broadcast the word of god to other people we can disseminate the message of god to other people some of us are called to minister in the church, the priests. Some of us are called to minister in our own households, parents, 
eh, would minister to their own children in their own households. Some of us would minister to our own colleagues at work, to our own uh, uh, classmates at school, to our own communities. And it doesn't always have to be preaching the Word of God the way preachers do. Eh? Many times, our own sowing of the good seed could just be as simple as giving good example. Eh? Giving good example to other people is a good starting point of sowing that seed. See? And then, if we have the opportunity, we sometimes uh, explain to people what the me gospel message is all about. Right? And for parents, this is exactly what we're doing here. Right? Uh, we're taking advantage of our breakfast, uh, uh, morning breakfast, in order to explain, in our case, to my children, what the gospel message is all about and what it will mean for them and how uh, they could apply it in their practical uh, everyday uh, lives. See? So parents can do this too. Okay? Or you can teach your children the catechism and go, the, go through the catechism with your own children. These are some of the means by which the, the seed is sown. The good seed, the good message of the word of God is sown. Okay? Now, uh-oh. Now, and then, and then, uh, on the other side of this equation, so you have the sower, eh? then you have the seed, the message of God. On the other side of that, you have a recipient. You have the ground to receive the word of God. Now, here is where uh, this becomes interesting <laughs> and complicated as well, right? Because as Jesus has described, uh, there are different, there could be different conditions for which the word of God may be received. Some people get excited about it. Oh, wow, that's a new discovery. They get excited about it, but they get tired. They lose interest along the way, and they just die out. And there are other people also who, right off the bat, are cold, stone cold. They don't care. Don't give a damn. No more. I don't care. But there are some people who are properly disposed. Who are properly disposed. And they are the ones who are able to receive the word of God and make it grow. Nourish it in themselves and make it grow. Okay. So as uh, St. Thomas and Aristotle uh, has said, Quid quid recipitur ad modum recipientis recipitur. Mm. <laughs> It's a nice, it's a nice Latin tongue twister, right? Quid quid recipitur ad modum recipientis recipitur. Eh? Translated into English means whatever is received, quid quid whatever recipitur is received, is received according to the disposition of the recipient. Okay, Whatever is received, is received according to the disposition of the recipient. In other words, in other words, whatever is being given to you is, is the same as it is given to other people. Like the Word of God is the Word of God. It's something very objective. Okay? And, but, but the way it will take root in a person, the way it will be meaningful in a person, depends on the disposition of that person, of the recipient. Okay? And this is where I think we have to examine our own selves and ask, okay, are we, are we the good soil? Are we good soil upon which the Word of God can actually take root and grow? See? Now, how can we be good soil? That's the question perhaps we can ask ourselves this morning. Okay? How can we be good soil so that the things that God tells us will really stick, will really uh, 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 take root in our soul and really grow and bear fruit. You know, our Lord said, if you allow that seed to grow in you and bear fruit, it will yield 30, 60, and 100 fold fruitfulness okay, in you. Okay, so if you allow it to grow. Now, how in the first place should we receive the Word of God and the message of God, which, by the way, comes in many different ways, right? It's not only through the Gospels. It's not only through the Bible. It is also through the uh, homilies we hear from our priests. It is also through the advice people give us and the advice of our parents. Eh? 
That is why you have to be listening to the advice of your parents because they give you, uh, they deliver, they are instruments to deliver uh, the message of God to us. Okay, so but how should we be? What should be our disposition? What kind of ground should we be? Number one, we should be open, right? Ground that is all packed and hard has no space for the seed to fall in. It's not permeable, right? Okay, right, Joe? So we have to be cultivated. We have to be open, see? We have to be open. The metaphors of this ground and seed growing is very, very uh, 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 realistic, okay? So we have to be open in order for that ground to absorb the seed, the Word of God, right? So there should be openness. Number two, there has to be humility, Humility. And you know, how does the ground get cultivated? It's, it's, it's malleable, it's soft, it's beaten up. Really, right? Because you, it has to be pounded on. So it's got to be soft and it's got to be... Uh, 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 it has to give, in other words. It has to give. It should not be like stone that so firm, so hard that nothing can penetrate it. It has to give. And normally, you cultivate the soil by beating it up a little bit. So-called beating it up. Right? Okay? So, in other words, in other words, uh, that's the metaphor for humility. You, you got to beat up yourself a little bit. See? You cannot be so stone cold that you think you are impermeable and that you are the... You are uh, 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 like a fork that cannot be penetrated. No, you got to be a little humble. Well, that may be a little bit, a lot humble, right? Allow yourself to be beaten up a little bit, okay? And, 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 uh, but the, the sower doesn't have to do that to you. You can do that to yourself, right? By, with a disposition of humility, by being humble, okay? Being humble. And number three, what's the other disposition that's important to receive the Word of God and make it grow? We have to have the attitude of a learner, to be a willing learner, to really want to learn, okay? Which is part and parcel of being humble. If you're humble, you will want to learn. If you don't want to be, if you're not humble, you will think, oh, I know that stuff already. I know everything, you know, I am smart, okay? Uh, well, all of us have a lot to learn. And we can learn more and more and more and more and more all the time. So we have to have the disposition of wanting to learn. Okay? So three things in order to prepare the good ground in us. What are those three things? Number one. Oh, we forgot already. <laughs> okay. B O be open. Have the disposition of openness, the willingness. To, to receive the word of God, right? Be open. Number two? Humility. Be humble. No. Humility. Number three? Um, be able to, to, able to, be able learn. to learn. Have the disposition of wanting to learn. Okay? Wanting to learn. So openness, humility, learning. Right? Openness, humility, learning. Okay. So those are the dispositions that are necessary for us to be good ground. Okay? Good ground. Okay. And for those of you folks who are sowers of the seed, you know, people who are in authority over others, priests, uh, nuns, teachers, uh, parents, okay? parents, there's one thing I'd like to tell uh, you, and that is, Let's never be discouraged to sow the seed, to sow the good seed. You know why? Because nothing is lost, really. Um, uh, when we are talking about people, uh, nothing is lost when it comes to sowing the seed. Nothing is lost. Whatever seed we sow by our word, our good example, and etc., the way that, the things we teach others, have faith in the grace of of God, the grace that God gives the soil, that uh, it would receive that word of God sooner or later. Maybe for some people it could be later, uh, when 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 uh, when finally they get uh, knocked off their senses and they wake up and realize my dad was right after all. 
my teacher was right after all. My pastor was right after all. You know, uh, it's just that I wasn't responding right away. Uh, but, you know, sooner or later, God will give the grace to that soul and that soul will respond. But you know, how, how will that soul respond? How will that soul be open to the grace of God? Well, if you pray, you have to pray for those souls to which you minister. You have to pray for your children so that your children be open to the ministering that you do, you parents. You, you pastors have to pray for, your, uh, uh, for the faithful of your community so that they respond. You people who are in charge of ministers, of groups of other Catholics or other people, you have to pray for the members of your group. You have to pray for the members of your community that they become good soil so that the word of God that you sow, the good example that you show, takes root in them. Without prayer for these souls, folks, it won't work. There can't, it's, it's, you know, action alone and just talking and talking alone and uh, it's not going to work. You need fertilizer, right? You need, uh, you, you need the watering uh, uh, and that is the part that you have to do. Okay? You have to fertilize, you have to water the field uh, besides sowing the seed. And by, by, by doing that, you water and you fertilize by your prayers and your sacrifices for these souls your prayers and mortification. And then God provides the sunshine. God provides the grace. The sunshine is the grace. They need the sun too. Okay? The seed needs the sun. And the sun would be the grace of God that will finally give the, uh, uh, the, the nourishment and the, the impetus and the wake-up call for those souls to finally open up to the message of the gospel and the word of God. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We're off to Mass. And more excitement with our new dog, Parker. <laughs> That's what we're naming him. That's what they want to name him, Parker. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> bye. Let's go.